Once, Elrage was particularly critical of one young auditor's failure to complete an action the PC had raised an objection to. Elrage considering this always a serious flunk. To him, it was rapidly. He started to write the priming order, and he held up its first page for me to see. It consisted only of the auditor's name, the word crown, the date, and two large rabbit ears. <laughs> and of course the rest of the, the other pages contained the details. Now I bet that auditor remembers that coming order to this day. He went on to become a very fine auditor. He gave me a lot of sessions, and the ship was 12. As the old man held up his drawing, he had an impish eye and a wicked grin. I did not see him send any anger or blame or brute force down that line. As I sat and quietly watched LRH at work on his folders, four things really impressed me. First of all, his relaxed mastery of the activity. How much he enjoyed his own virtuosity in producing wins. The depth and warmth of his kindness and pure generosity of spirit. The directness and clarity of his control and communication. As I look back now, what impresses me most is the extent of the responsibility he willingly and happily took for the TAP, for the PC, for the auditor, and for the CS, and for the task of helping auditors and CSs take full responsibility for their roles in the activity for the PC's wins. He pervaded the area and he created change as he went along. Change that brought everybody up to him. And I say that this is the mark of the true profession in our field. There are things, these are things I always remember when I hear criticism of LRH, even if the criticism is valid, as it often can be. I have to feel very, very sorry for the people who can only see what they can criticize and who look only to criticize. He was, as we've been told today, and I agree, a huge being with extraordinary abilities and powers and one who could be infinitely generous in his outflow. I mentioned a moment ago that LRH now and again took technical actions that violated strict rules he had already laid down. No Dianetics left to clear, for example. In this way, he could be said to have introduced some doubt into his own subject, and to have opened the door for us all to pick and choose our violations of the tech. We need to remember that he kept a very close eye on what he ordered for PCs whom he was CSing. I heard of no one caving in on the ship because of Dianetics after clear. And it's inconceivable the LRH I knew would have forced any auditing on anyone. If he had wanted others to deliver Dianetics after clear, he would have issued the HCOB authorizing them to do it, telling them when they could and should do it, and how to do it. If we don't have that HCOB, we don't have clear right to follow his example. To do otherwise is to follow a hidden data line. <laughs> a hidden data line leads to trouble and confusion sooner or later. It is perfectly true that throughout everything that he wrote or lectured, there are contradictions some points of unclarity, some gaps. It is an odd point that he left them in place. I understand that towards the end of his life, he ordered a project for that purpose. It 
doesn't seem to have been done. It still needs to be done, and I hope it will be done soon by people qualified to do it, willing to do it, and with the necessary resources to do it. With regard to explorations into Czech since LRH's death, I'd like to say the following. I accept that many things have changed since LRH moved on, both in the external world and on the seventh dynamic. I am happy that it is so. It is possible that the changes have made some parts of LRH's technology irrelevant or unworkable. I very much doubt that changes make any difference to the basics of auditing and to the underpinnings of the technology and their many manifestations, meaning Dianetics, the grades, the rundowns, and the OT levels. I accept that there are some people who do not respond to the technology for one reason or another. We have plenty to do for those who do respond to it. I accept that people experience case gain from actions originated by others or altered by others or delivered by people not trained for them. I personally tend to be very conservative about changes to the accepted Scientology approach that has worked so well, so well for me and for so many others. And please let me interject a personal note here, which is that I don't hold myself up as any shining example as a Scientology product. My situation is my situation. And I have nothing but gratitude to LRH and to all my CSs, my auditors, supervisors, cramming officers, and all other Scientology friends. Why am I conservative and cautious? An indirect answer is, when you have read, studied, and understood every word that LRH has written and lectured, and when you can correctly place each data or opinion that he gave into its order of importance, along with all the other things that he said, and when you can demonstrate a similar degree of virtuosity, develop a similar depth of humanity and generosity, and exert a strong and clear control of communication, you will have my full attention. <laughs> because you will indeed be a professional like our age. Until then, I remain a committed conservative. As such, I recommend that anyone who offers an alteration of technology, or who thinks of accepting it, should consult very closely with his or her personal integrity and instincts for survival. If integrity and survival instincts permit the action, let the adventures begin. A more direct answer is that I'm conservative because I experienced LRH as a tech terminal, directly, up close and personal, for years, some years. I felt his CS. He took very good care of me in and out of session, a gift that will be with me forever. I saw him taking very good care of other people on his tech lines. I can't say that I got the full measure of Alan Hubbard, but I think I got pretty close. Now, when I view someone who has opinions about what tech to apply, and how to apply it, I can say to myself, perhaps you were right. I am all for stable case gain. What consenting adults do amongst themselves in private is not necessarily any of my business. And I don't necessarily look to make it my business. At the same time, I consider what I see of the one who seems to be saying, I know better. I compare that
would I commit my welfare as an immortal being, or that of my friends, into the hands of another, as I did with the LRH that I knew. My instincts have so far prompted me to be cautious. Now, LRH as a human being had enough faults and failings for me not to give him unquestioning overall loyalty again. But to that core of sanity, life, hope, strength, pure friendship, and generous loving kindness, all that was LRH at his very best, to that LRH I do indeed give unquestioning and uncom uncompromised loyalty forever. We will be fortunate to see him again. We don't know when we will see him again. When he appears amongst us again, how will we, as professionals, be ready for